the secrets of the Dracula clan. We are vampires. As told by four vampires and one hideously drooling drudge. Each with their own side of the story to tell. Vladimir Dracula. Also known as Vladdy. Yes! Vlad and the Chosen One. The spiritual leader of the world's vampire clans. What an honour when I, Bertrand du Fortinesa, was entrusted with guarding Vlad and fulfilling this destiny. A momentous responsibility. And one I wish to share with future vampire generations. So, I will set down here in this journal an account of the events that shaped Vlad's rise to glory and how under my tutelage he was an unprecedented success in keeping with most vampire clans the members of the Dracula family possess the most abhorrent qualities backstabbing treachery you devious conniving witch unscrupulous craving for power <laughs> and a taste for random acts of cruelty. <laughs> in short, everything you could possibly hope for in a bunch of undead, black-hearted vampires. As young Vlad was growing up, his role model was the head of the family, the Prince of Darkness himself, Count Dracula. <laughs> The most infamous and revered vampire for centuries, whose reputation for bloodlust was notorious. I want blood and I want it now! Whose refusal to show mercy to his victims was legendary. Time for dinner. And who had a nifty way with a bedtime story. And so the sweet young princess was beaten. And the evil vampire lived happily ever after. Dad, I'm too old for bedtime stories, and I'm too young to be sleeping in a coffin. Ah, you're never too young to learn good habits. Now, it may seem a bit dark and scary at first, but don't worry. Dad is here to nail you in. The Count made it his life's work to raise his son in the grand vampire tradition. Vladdy, Vladdy, lonely. You're supposed to be my son and heir! Yeah, well, I never chose to be, did I? Take it out on the monkey, why don't you? Lock up your teddies, they'll be scared of you now. For a traditionalist, like the Count, Vlad's modern thinking was hard to swallow. I am not eating that. It's alive. Oh, don't worry, Vlad. Everybody gets first bite nerves. You just need some practice until you're old enough to start on the peasants. Now be a brave boy and bite the bunny. I'm not biting the bunny. I'm not biting anyone. Then you're a vampire. Start acting like one! Family frictions grew ever more intense as clashes between father and son became more frequent. Go to your room! But Dad... Vlad was able to sound up to his wolfhound Zoltan. I hate being a vampire, it really sucks! Isn't that rather the point? And confide in his friendly slayer, Erin. But there were some things he couldn't even tell them. So he poured out his darkest thoughts into a private and top secret notebook. A secret document whose contents were never to be revealed. Which he really shouldn't have left lying about. I've got to get this off my chest. I'm using a nice way of saying it. Dad's a pain in the bat wing. I know that's harsh, but we just don't see eye to eye. What are you wearing? Join the scouts. Is that all right? Not till there's breath in my body. No son of Dracula wears a woggle. He sees me as one enormous vampiric letdown. And now that I'm a threat too, it isn't exactly making for happy families. Silence! You can't 
can't tell me what to do anymore. You think you can defy me? I am your father. Don't ever forget that. Then what are you waiting for? Bite me. I suppose things were easier when I was younger. Dad might have been a quick-tempered bloodsucker who fireballed the roof first and didn't bother to ask questions later. But at least I knew where I stood. But the Chosen One business has changed all that. Do you think I'm the Chosen One? Don't be daft. You're a rubbish vampire. There's no way it's you. Thanks. If only Robin had been right. No such luck, though. Like it or not, wearing the crown of the Chosen One was my destiny. You know you are the Chosen One when you sacrifice the life you love to save the family you love. Be gone! I was the chosen one, leader to hordes of devious, biting vampires. My worst nightmare. Now things between Dad and I could only go from bad to worse. Because as my powers started to develop, I was able to do stuff like this. And this. And this. Ah! 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 Daddy, 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 I just think we need to be more sensible! We. There is no we. All right. Uh, well, what a wonderful view it is up here! If Dad and I continue fighting like this, somebody is going to get really hurt. And it isn't going to be me. For the Count, accustomed to being lord of all he surveyed for centuries, the power shift between Sun and himself was troubling. At his wit's end, he sought advice. <laughs> Renfield, I require an amanuensis. Oh. I need you to send a letter to my baby brother, Ivan, stateside. Oh. And I need you to be my amanuensis. Actually, I mean... Yeah. Just write down what I say. Oh. <laughs> Here is an amanuensis. A man of man best of best, you have to. <clears throat> Look no further. It's not going to hurt, is it? No promises. Dear Ivan, Dear. you mad, bad, bad out of hell. I've been reminiscing about the old days. Reminiscing? What ecstasy it was to be undead on those long, hot summer nights back in the old country. Hungry for knowledge about ancient vampire tradition, about etiquette. About eating cat. Putting into action everything our father taught us. <laughs> A good night's slaughter, little brother! 75 peasants. And I haven't finished yet. Bravo! I got myself a takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> Just how I hoped it would be with my own uh, fanglet and air. Hmm. Come to measure me for my coffin? No, but good thinking. We can do that later. Can't wait. Neither can I. This will bring us so much closer. We can go out flying and hunting and terrorizing together. Father and son. No! I'm not you, Dad. I never will be. But you will be a vampire. There's no escaping that. Then at least let me have three more years. No! 
It's time you grew up and accepted some responsibility. I did imagine he'd outgrow this defiance with age. I'm disappointed in you, Vlad. You always are. You lack discipline. You're insubordinate, and worst of all, you never listen to me. You never listen to me. I don't need to. I know what's good for you, and like it or not, you have to learn in order to fulfill your potential. But, dear brother, it's a thorny business when a young fang becomes a fully grown bloodsucker. <laughs> I recall there was a certain amount of huffing and puffing when your own boy Boris reached that fickle age. Any last requests? Yeah. Uh, can we do this a different time? You're not going anywhere, Doris. Then again, coming of age can bring all sorts of hidden personality quirks to the fore. For all we born vampires, facing the blood mirror on our 16th birthday is a momentous occasion. Boris? And it certainly brought out the beast in Boris. Lock up your daughters. Look at you. What a transformation. Boris turning into a homicidal maniac, draining you and I, his own father and uncle, of our powers. Boris! in a bid for total dominance over the Dracula family. How gratifying and yet unsettling it must have been for you. I own this family. No one can stop me. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> to be honest, I, there's been the odd locking of horns going on here too. I'll say. <laughs> Vladdy just doesn't appreciate the importance of tradition, especially the bit about biting whoever you want, whenever you want. What do you think you're doing? I was just about to ask you the same question. Oh, but that song is Transylvanian. She must be from the old country. It's years since I've had a home-cooked meal. No, you can't. Pick a fight with me, boy, and you will lose. I said no. Ivan, your advice in this matter would be most welcome. Your ever-hating brother, Count Dracula. So, as you can see, just the usual vampire father-son thing going on in the Dracula family. Young Vlad has been shaped by his parents, especially his father. But not necessarily in the way that the Count hoped. Vlad has shown himself to be very much his own vampire, and that has meant rejecting everything his father holds dear, much to the Count's dismay. So, all that is left for the mighty Count Dracula is the hope that there will always be a part of Vladdy that is his father's son. And only time will tell whether he will be disappointed. Renfield! Arrange a carrier raven for my missive and await further orders. Right away, Master. But first, time for a little dictation of my own. <laughs> <clears throat> my father, he was a man of many parts. Yeah, I <clears throat> it's just me. <clears throat> My father, he was a man of many parts. I wouldn't say he was a bad father. He was the worst, cruelest, unkindest father you could ever imagine. <laughs> yeah, that's nearer the mark. 
until the day he met the most grisly, grisly end of the fangs of Zoltan and his wolfy pals. Yeah. Renfield Senior had this habit of skulking outside the castle. You have to remember I hung out with a bad pack of hellhounds in those days. <sighs> anyway, one moonless night, my muchachos and I ambushed someone by the South Tower. By the time we realized it was Renfield Senior, all that was left of him was what's in my basket. Oh, oh no, that's a little accident I had earlier. The bone. So we took a secret to the grave? No longer a problem. Oh. <sighs> and that was that. Until young Master Vlad got the notion to bring back my dad. He got it into his head. And Benfield Senior might possess the knowledge he desired above all else. The secret of how to get out of becoming a vampire. So, he got his mitts on my most private manuscripts, studied their monstrous contents, and used what he learned to carry out an unspeakable act of dark alchemy. Bringing my dad back from the grave. It's naked. What have you done? I've seen him once more. It all came flooding back. The scorn, the insults, the constant fear of Chinese burns. The man who made me the quivering bag of nerves I am lived and breathed again. Why have you never liked me, Dad? Because you're weak. I told you not to let them Draculas walk all over you. But look at you. You've got their boot marks all over your back. Count's not really like that. Deep down. Deep down, nothing. I let him and his father get away with treating me like dirt because it was always, we'll grant you immortality one day, Renfield. But did they? Did they, cods? Even after I offered to let them drain your blood on your 18th birthday. What? Oh, I thought you knew that. On reflection, a syringe and eight empty milk bottles was not the 18th birthday present I had been expecting. Apparently, your dad's running riot up at the castle, and you're the only one who knows enough about alchemy to stop him. But I can't. Too weak. Renfield, we've been through this before. You're not weak. It's time for you to stand up to him. But there's no point. Now that Dad's going to destroy my master. What? My father made my life a misery. It has only been the constant indifference and ingratitude of my master... Renfield. ...that has helped rebuild my confidence. Do you want these worms in your face? I'd, I'd rather eat them. And now it was time for me to thank him. For all those little unkindnesses. By <laughs> standing up to my dad. I'm not going to let you hurt my master. Don't make me laugh. You won't stop me. You haven't got a bottle. See? You rubbish. A clear off mummy's boy. You keep mum out of this. She was twice the man you are. She was weak. Like you. You are so dead. What's that? What's happening? The antidote to regeneration. Second rule of alchemy. Always be prepared. <laughs> you go back to where you came from. A bone in a dog's basket. No. You had to pick now to stand up to me, didn't you? You sniveling!
So that was that. Goodbye, Dad. Again. Funny, really. How little family resemblance there was between us. But I like to think it's just one of those genetic quirks that makes the world such a fascinating Redfield, place. Redfield, have you seen my daughter? Please. No, master. How very galling. I remember something vile I wanted to say to her, and I hate to forget it before I pass it on. Sure you have. Hmm. Wouldn't want to leave Ingrid out of Vlad's story. Not that she let that happen. Especially now. Ingrid Dracula, daughter of the Prince of Darkness, bane of her brother's life and now queen of the video bloggers. The role of the daughter in the vampire family unit has always been simple. Keep quiet, keep out of the way, and keep the castle tidy. And that has got to change. And that's where Ingrid Dracula's vlog comes in. The self-help guide for the modern vampiress. Sisters, we all know the feeling. The vampire world is stuck in the Middle Ages. You can be as evil as you like, but if you're wearing a skirt, no one's interested. Now fly into my arms. Come on, fly! Fly like a bat! Dad, this is stupid. It's not stupid, it's fun. Now come on, every young vampire must learn how to fly. So why haven't you taught me yet? Oh, Ingrid, I've told you. It's because you're a girl. You might go to any kind of lengths to impress. To get people's attention. Sit! To show that the female of the species can be as deadly as the male. <laughs> you think I'm going to stand back and watch you inherit my castle? You're more stupid than he looks. Do you think I like being Count Junior? Dad's waited 600 years for a son and heir. It would have made my life a lot easier if I was born a girl. You know, you really shouldn't say that out loud. I'm going to show Dad why I should be his favourite. I'm going to be the biggest troublemaker this school has ever seen. Ooh, opening an umbrella indoors. That's bad. You go, girl. Dad's not going to be impressed by that. But somehow, however hard you try to be evil, you stand corrected. I'm wet. It never seems to work out. Wait till my dad hears about this. He won't have to wait very long. Vlad's probably telling him as we speak. Vlad? Van Helsing suspended him and Robin over the fire alarm. They're in a lot of trouble because of you. No! <laughs> Guessing the school rang you then. Suspended, Vlad. I knew you could do it. Haven't we all wondered what it would be like to have our talents noticed by the head of the house, just once, as if? Although there was that one time. Hey, princess. How's it hanging? Dad, I want you to look into my eyes, deep into my eyes. You know, Ingrid, you really are growing up to be a lovely young lady. Really? Look, I've been reading your school report, and I just know you could do a whole lot better. I am here for you. We can sit down and work this thing out. You want to spend time with me? As long as it takes. But you never want to spend time with me. Well, that's all going to change. Come here. I love you, Ingrid. I love you too, Dad. Hey, what is it, Sugar Plum? This is wrong. I'm wrong. That doesn't count, though. He'd been hypnotized. So what's needed? The answer is obvious. <laughs> what we need is women in power. Or should I say, sneaky, treacherous women in power? I'm cancelling this right now. How do I do that? You don't. Only I can cancel the contract. You devious.
thieves, conniving witch. You say all the right things. My mother Magda, so evil, so selfish, so in control. It's what you need to be, sisters, if you want to get on in the vampire world. Hello, darlings. She has what I call the three Ds. She's decisive, devious. I think that sounds fair. And a tiny bit deranged. Isn't she just the most evil woman in the world? And like mother, like daughter. I'll decide what I must do. So when the day came for me to take control of this family, because I'm in charge now, I seized it with both treacherous hands. Traitor! I never tire of remembering that day, when for a while at least, the tables were turned. Power, sisters. It's a wonderful thing. And after you've tasted it once, nothing else will do. So, to conclude on how growing up in a dynasty of dysfunction has shaped the next Dracula generation. Ingrid Dracula has developed a strong streak of resentment and ruthlessness, which has made her a force to be reckoned with. Vladimir Dracula, possessor of the most awesome powers, but reticent to use them for evil's sake. As each day passes, he eclipses his father a little more. Meanwhile, the Count himself is a formidable but fading force. Like a cornered beast, he is unpredictable, dangerous and often deranged. A threat to enemies and family, and drooling drudges alike. Ah, Master, a letter from your brother. Ah, well, here's hoping it's useful advice. Otherwise, I'll be looking for the nearest hideous drooling drudge to take out my annoyance of. <coughs> I won't do the accent. <coughs> Yo, big bro. Sorry to hear about your issues with young Vladimir. My advice is threefold. One, plenty of tough love. Two, make him take lots of cold showers. Three, if all else fails, a straight jacket can work wonders. Follow these simple steps and you shall be fine. They certainly did the trick with my Boris. Well, they did until he proclaimed himself judge, jury and executioner, slayed the Grand High Vampire, tried to murder you, <laughs> and ended up as a pile of dust. But what can I say? Boys will be boys. <laughs> Master, <clears throat> you're not angry, are you? Ah, <laughs> oh, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs>